أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم مددكم ونظركم يا سيدي يا رسول الكريم مدد يا سيدي يا سلطان أولي يا شيخ عبد الفايز الداقستاني سلطان أولي يا شيخ محمد نازم حكاني مولانا الشيخ الشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني شيخ محمد عادل مرد خالق الخرج دواني وصحاب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا ابو بكر الصديق سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان امام الحسن امام حسين سيدنا فاطمه عليه السلام وسائر سادتنا وصدقنا الفاتحه اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Ati Allah, Ati Rasul, wa ulul amri minkum. And uh, inshaAllah, always a reminder from myself and abdukul ajisu, da'ifu, miskinu, zalimu, jahal. And by the grace of Allah that I'm still in existence. We took a path in which to be nothing. And everything in this world trying to make us into something. As much as we can be and enter into Allah's oceans of nothingness. As much as Allah will open His Divinely Greatness, it's the opposite of everything in this dunya and from Holy Hadith, Holy Qur'an, all these realities, these awliyaullah come and bring their knowledges and reflect out that reality for us to improve ourselves. That Prophet told his companions that the companions are like stores on a dark night and that any one of them that you follow you'll be guided. And only Allah come into our lives and remind us if Prophet is teaching that my companions are like stars, Najm, then there must be an immense reality and that any one of them you fi- follow you'll be guided that Guidance is coming from a star and stars on dark nights. And that this path is based on reaching towards an eternal light, which now they understand are stars, not planets. The planet is the material world, a world based on form, that which is ethereal and of a gaseous nature. How to reach that level and that reality is how to become a star. That what Prophet wanted for us, be a star, reach to where I dressed my holy companions, that they are all stars and I am the star maker. The one whom is claiming his companions are stars. Imagine then the station and the maqam, if those who accompany you become stars then you are a star maker. By your reality you will bring out the eternal reality within people is the prophetic reality. Not to become a mass and just the foreign body that we live, eat and drink upon this earth and then die. Because ashes to ashes and dust to dust, anything from the material world goes back into the material world. That which is eternal will reach beyond the realm of physicality and become ethereal and from the oceans of Malakut. And then Allah described to Prophet قَالْ مُؤْمِنْ بَيْتُ اللَّهِ that this star reality is based on their hearts and their hearts are the houses of God Allah Almighty. So they come and they're linking for us that if we want to be a star and reach to the star reality Everything is based on the heart. If there's one piece of you good, all of you good. If one piece of you of piece of flesh bad, all of you bad. And Prophet is described is qalb. And this qalb is the baytullah, not the maghs, not the head, not any other organ of the body. But Allah was directing that this heart of insan wa lakal karamna bani adam that I have honored this creation because I gave them my house within their being. 
I did not give to the giraffe, I did not give to the orangutan, I did not give to the jinn. But the qalb of the mu'min that can reach to that reality, there are mu'min jinn that reach towards that understanding. But for this insan, this immense gift that Allah gave, I gave you a heart in which can reach towards my realities and my Divinely Kingdom and Sayyidina Muhammad is coming and then teaching us, then be a star, be that which is eternal. The star then which gives light and loses its mass. Then this reality of the star is the levels of the heart. This lataif al is about the reality of the house of Allah That if we want to enter into the house of Allah then we have to study the house of Allah That which you study and that which you enter into its reality so that it will reflect upon the believer's heart. So that their house and their heart can become the house of Allah so, some may not understand what is the purpose of lataifs and did Prophet bring all of these? Of course, every knowledge is from Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet brought Al-Kitab, the Holy Qur'an and millions of books have been written from this one Holy Qur'an. So, you can't tell to every book, no mind people, they say, oh, did Prophet say this, did Prophet say that? Oh, yeah, he brought one amazing reality which we call Holy Qur'an. From this the foundation of every reality, every Sahabi, every Ahlul Bayt, every Wali, every Salihin took from that ocean and brought out all its beatific realities. That's the immensity of when Allah describing the kawthar. They don't know at that time it's coming out that from this gift I've given to you Sayyidina Muhammad it will be a fountain of abundance springing. Not only all of dunya but all of eternity, all of its exergies, all of its realities, all of its powers will be eternally flowing. From one letter they can pull out magnificent oceans. That's why in these Nat Sharif when they're reciting, especially on the Farsi ones, they start talking about Imam Jafar as Sadiq and someone without a background doesn't understand, you know, why you, you're saying this light of Qur'an, you're the secrets of Qur'an because they don't understand what the Qur'an is. إِنَّهُ ذِكْرٌ وَقُرْآنٍ مُبِينٌ Allah describing who that he, the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad is the dhikr, is the remembrance of all the samawati wal ard, which is immense. Because when you're remembering Prophet you're actually praising upon Allah Because to remember Prophet you have to say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa rafahna laka dhikrak. It's not for people on earth that are debating, oh we should do Mawlid, we should not do Mawlid, we should… No, no, this is for the people of Malakut, beyond the stations of Sayyidina Jibreel salam, astonished in what Allah has given to that light, the authority of that light, the power of that light. And then Allah wa rafahna, I have raised your, your remembrance, your zikr, your reality beyond the comprehension of anything in this dunya. And no doubt, dhikrun mubeen, you are my clear Qur'an and the heart of Prophet manzil Qur'an. Where is this Qur'an emanating for all of eternity? It's emanating from the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad So something huge. So to be a, a star, to take a path in which Ya Rabbi I want to understand the house of Allah this qalb. So then they come and teach the book on Lataif al-Qalb and teachings on Lataif al-Qalb is about the house of Allah How to understand the house of Allah what reality is within the house of Allah and how to achieve that reality, how to become a star.
means then we have in matter and we are a creation from matter. We have three states of matter, solid, liquid, gaseous. Tariqah doesn't only come and just say a reality but they want you to reach the reality. It's not a philosophy at school, the professor talks about something he doesn't even know and make everybody to fall asleep. But what they want is to achieve that reality. So if you're going to leave the material form and enter into the world of light to become a star, then they understand three states of matter. Your solid state, your liquid state and gaseous state. The solid state is a state in which you listen only to yourself and you're of a square-minded nature. And Mawlana Shaykh Nazim Qatti Sallallahu Alaihi say, Ya are square-minded people, square-headed person, doesn't listen to anyone, doesn't fit into anything because you're square. Look at all, think of all the, 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 all the expressions the English language has, you square-head. <laughs> Ana Rabbi al-Ala, I am the Most High is the square-headed one. Not what he thinks of himself or she thinks, everyone thinks themselves the greatest. But the reality to know myself, am I square? Am I liquid? And do I really think I'm gaseous? You may have gas but this is not that reality. <laughs> this is ethereal where you're in an instant you can be pulled out of your body. The solid state is that you are very mental and you're too much into your head and you think everything through your head and you think that everything you do through your head will resolve an issue. And then Allah when He wants to guide He sends you to the shams. So Sayyidina Jalaluddin was an external scholar and very tough, very hard, very rigid and Allah sent. Shams Tabriz is all from Farsi, all the writings at the maqams were in Farsi. Shams is the sun, Tabriz is the highest heat, the highest point of that fire. Means he sent him a Shams that the guides and each awliya and shaykhs, they have different responsibilities. But from these shaykhs of this reality, they are like a sun, they produce an immense amount of light. Somebody say, every time I fix my glass he's throwing up signs for 666. Six, six. Crazy guy, <laughs> I go like this, my glasses are falling, he's not throwing up any signs. <laughs> I had to throw that in because I was so upset with that comment, hey, some crazy people, you're deleted. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Where were we? You have to have a sense of humor in this life, in this world. This is not about being rigid and being hard. This is about being very loving. These shaykhs of this reality, they endure tremendous difficulty at the hands of people. And their character and their nature is always very loving and very kind. They are not a rigid and a hard people. The sun is something that has such a light. Think of the physical sun and imagine that awliya are more powerful than that sun. That's not, Allah didn't say, Walaka karamna the sun. I have <laughs> honored you, not the sun. And that sun was just a symbol of your station. As Sayyidina Yusuf said, Allah has put under my control the sun, the moon and 11 planets that are under my feet. His maqam was in charge of those planets and that's not something big for all of you. People think angels are doing it, the one above the angel is the Prophet. So these are stations in which they can inherit because awliya are the inheritors of the Prophets of Bani Israel. So there is a wali right now in charge of the station of the sun, the moon and the 11 planets. Although NASA took off one of the planets, Pluto, but Pluto still in their authority. Don't, don't you keeps changing their mind because they don't know anything. 
So this reality of Shams Tabriz is that Allah must inspire us towards these shaykhs. That the heat and the energy that emanate from their soul will take a solid matter and will crush the solid matter and make them to be liquid. By Allah is that a might, is that a Rasul, is that a is that Allah, is that a Rasul, is that al-Mu'mineen? Means that when they accompany the shaykhs, accompany the turuq, the square-mindedness will never work with the shaykh. Either he'll break you down or you run away. But there's no way you're going to be square-headed with them. You're not going to tell them what to do. You're not going to impose your thought, your belief and your understanding upon them. By their nature, even if you're right, they'll say you're wrong. Why? To take away your edges. Very easy to make something that's solid and square-headed and you just keep shaving the edges, shaving the edges. Everything in life, because Allah wants the station, the shaykh, the teacher is merely the one whom teaching and these lights are emanating from their souls. And you feel the heat, you feel the power of the zikr and you begin to feel yourself melting by the tests of what you give and what you do and how you participate, all of it is meant to crush you. So that you feel I'm being crushed, I'm being crushed, I'm being crushed, Ya Rabbi, I gave, I did, I do and my identity, I no longer can understand it. What I wanted, what I planned, what my family planned for me, it makes no more sense. Because the square is, is very strong on their mind. Everything is planned out in their head. They want to enter your head and turn off your lights. <laughs> right? Go into the head, lights off. And then Sheikh <laughs> Mazza would say, this is a no-minded person. Which in, in one sense is a compliment. Because you're reaching a state in which your mind is really shutting off. Now somebody in the back may be interpreting that I'm not going to listen to anything the shaykh asked me, that's not it. The no-mindedness is actually whatever he says, you are samina wa tana and it's done within an instant. It's not waited two times, three times, five times, it's not said six times. That's not samina wa tana where everything he says I do the opposite. No, no, lights out is that whatever this amr and whatever their orders are coming, Coming into the heart of that servant, Samina wa tana, they hear it and they obey. They don't let it even to move towards the head, it enters to the heart and it's done. For if any order or any command should come and move into my head, it will be lost in oblivion. Everything you're told by the shaykh, if you throw it into your head, counter it, think about it, chew on it. They have expression, I'll chew on it. What does that mean? I'm going to debate everything you say and counter everything that's coming. Because you're like a life coach, you're taking the coordinates of Allah giving the coordinates of Prophet and you're finding yourself way off of their coordinates. If you want to take everything they teach and just kind of chew on it and think about it, you're staying square-headed. So those whom achieved their nature, their reality to be melted. So with the light and the guidance of the association, they find everything is in conflict with them and they begin to shut off their head. Anything they want, it comes against. Everything they want to do, it comes against. Everything they try to achieve, it comes against until the person feeling, ah, no more for me. Uh, I'm not going to think about anything. And that square is now melting. So with the heat, they apply onto that square-headedness and it enters into the oceans of liquid. Now what's a liquid state for a servant to understand? We understood square-headedness, am I into my head too much? Am I thinking about everything, analyzing what he's saying? Who's your head to analyze what they're saying? You're too much in your head, already now you're pondering too much. What are you talking about? I wonder. It's not that. Enter into the heart. It's whatever he's saying is exactly my state. Whatever they're teaching is exactly my condition. Just not to go to my head. Anyone too much in their head is the wrong, wrong way. 
And Allah is now making that for all of dunya. All of dunya now is going to be in a state of panic. They don't know what's happening. And if they're going by their head, God forbid, they go <laughs> by their head, they're running into the flame. Not running away from the flame, they're running into the flame. So when somebody comes and tells you why you don't just put some alcohol wipes all over your hands, why don't you put some masks all over your face, you're running into the flame. We're not a people who wash with alcohol. We are people who use my Allah is that a might is upon water, is malaika upon water. You take water to wash away every type of difficulty. This nafas rahman a breath that comes is from Allah for the believers is like a life mask from paradise. They don't breathe the air of people. They breathe the air in which Allah's nafas and rahmah is entering into their system and sustaining their paradise reality. And every light that enters into their breath and every darkness and badness that exhales from their breath. They didn't want to put something that puts the exhaling of bad energy back into their breathing. So it means everything is the opposite of what this dunya is trying to teach. Because the din- dunya when these things come, they enter into a state of panic. Then if you don't have a virus, they want to shoot you with the virus. So come and take a shot so that if you didn't have this in you, we can definitely put it inside. Oh, excuse me? Maybe Allah protecting me from that. So no, no, why don't you put it inside of you? Because once it's inside of you, you'll be protected from it. Oh, that's like open the door, let the devil in, then shut the door and say, okay, well now where's the devil going? No, no, those whom are, are guarded by Allah when, when Allah declare war upon creation, He does not send soldiers. He does not send airplanes and He does not send bombs. These are crazy human beings do this. Jundun min as the soldiers of Allah are a virus, are small, the cells, the atoms, all of them under the command of Allah Not a single thing moves that not written by Allah Its movement can't move without the writing and the command of Allah Nothing can befall the believer that not written in Allah's book. And then سَخَلْ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي That not only that book it cannot befall you but O oh, lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad know that everything is in the authority and the hand of Prophet Allah gave the authority. If Allah is the commander of that entity, no matter how small because Allah commands the atoms. Every virus is, is, has an atom inside of it. It's a created thing and uncreated also has atoms. And what we said before in the other talks, all the atoms are under Sayyidina Muhammad So it means everything is under the authority of Prophet that's why their shifa, esmuhu dawas wa zikruhu shifas, that the names they recite, the zikr of what they're reciting is their medicine, is their blessings, is their protection. And no protection can come without their command, no pill can work without their command, no difficulty and sickness can come without Allah writing it. And if Allah writes it, Allah can give a remedy to it. There's not a mask and an alcoholic rub that you can put upon yourself to make it go away. You're actually burning faster. Now how did we get to this subject from… Because <laughs> that was for relevant news of today. For those who are running to get masks and alcoholic rubs all over your body and in place of wudu, good, good God you're going to burn faster. Don't put alcohol upon your body, my and water is Allah's grace and blessings upon our body. That this liquid state is our testing, the world is now in a liquid state. Everything solid is going to melt, every difficulty going to find a crumbling and every square-headed minded thing is going to find a way of being crushed. 
And if Allah wants them to be crushed, to be achieved at a station, then we're praying that Allah grant us to enter into a liquid station. The liquid state is a state in which the servant is quelling and silencing their objection. Whatever condition and position Allah puts them, like water. If you make a maze and throw a square piece, it doesn't fit anything. You don't know what to do with it. But if you throw water, it goes into every crack and every crack. Means whatever condition Allah puts them in to the best of their ability, they submit. They understand there's nothing to do about it. That they enter into ocean of taslim and their character is liquid, very soft, very gentle. Because hard and solid, you throw it, it hurts everybody. Liquid, you throw it all over you, just get upset because now there's some sort of a liquid on you. If it's water, it even evaporates and no problem, it harms no one. It actually can extinguish fire if they're a liquid state. Then with a liquid state, more energy, more energy, the ethereal state is almost instant. Because to bring water to gas is almost an instant process. But to take it from solid to gas is a long procedure. So it means in a liquid state, as soon as you reach energies, the tajallis of the zikr, tajalli of the experiences at home, when you're a liquid person, you're of an ethereal nature. Anytime a tajalli comes, you're burning with the heat, immediately leaving your body. There's no need to stay within the body, the ethereal state, they are moving. At any instant, a tajalli comes, they're outside of their body. And having an experience from the world of malakut and the reality of their soul. With that understanding is what they're trying to achieve. That's why the turuqs are here. The real turuqs, some I don't know what they're doing, but the ones that are supposed to be making people into stars. That they want the people to come, support, do, give everything to crush your square-headedness and that your square head not going to get you anywhere and your square mind not going to open any door other than nothing and then enter into a state of nothing. Then take them to be liquid and fluid in which they can do and go anywhere, sleep on anything and they submit from that tajalli after that then continuous state of ethereal nature that they're always experiencing from that maqam. Means we pray that Allah open those realities, take away the solid nature, let us to enter into the liquid nature and to achieve the states of the ethereal reality. Now the star, this is the state of the sun. If you lose the mass and lose the solidness, you enter into a liquid state, they burn, 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 you become a gaseous state, you are now opening into a star. That's why in all of the miniatures of all religions they had a sun over the head. It symbolized a saint or a prophet, why? Because they were stars on earth. They were lights of the Divine lights. Their souls illuminate although nobody may see it except those whom have spiritual eyes to witness. It's not a light in which everybody feels, you have to be of a specific frequency and nature to experience their light. Many people come and say, I don't know who that person is, nobody. But if their reality is tuned, they're attuned into that reality. Take your flashlight and try to change your television channels tonight. Everyone go home, try with your flashlight. Change the channel. Why doesn't it work? It's just a light like the remote. No, no, the remote is attuned to that TV. The processor within the TV acknowledges the infrared signal upon the remote, means they've been attuned together. Your remote changes the TV station, not a flashlight. Try a flashlight and you people think you're crazy. So then this reality they're talking about is is a higher than Sony technology. So the, the shaykh is a remote 
And everybody coming into the association, if they attune themselves, open their heart and sincerely ask Allah I'm coming to be nothing and I want to reach that reality, you keep attending and the shaykh will begin to make you into a remote. And they have what they call slave and master in technology. It's interesting that the tech people understand this stuff a lot in the room and all over the world are tech students. Right? Don't you have the master device and the slave device? Pondering, oh pondering one. Don't you have the master device in tech? You have the master servers, you have the master equipment and the slave. Why? The slave is the dummy unit. It's not supposed to be putting in all the frequencies. The master unit is. You can operate 500 servers with one master server. Because it taught all the other servers, don't think, I'm just going to send you the information and store it. Could you imagine if each server said, nope, what, not now. There would be no way of this communication and technology. What Allah wanted to show us? If you come and stop pressing your buttons, shut your mind on what you think the buttons are for, empty yourself of yourself. The shaykh will begin to attune you so that you think like him, you talk like him, you act like him and him being the capital H, not him, but the him behind him, the him behind him, the him behind him, which was Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. They're not supposed to be anything, they're not supposed to be anything about themselves. But what they're attuning into is this Divine Frequency, rid yourself where you don't understand any of your buttons anymore. And when you press channel 7, channel 7 didn't open and you made your remote into blank, I'm nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm a Fadeeb Ta'ala, I don't know anything, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Sit in their associations, liquid state is they can begin to send you frequencies and these frequencies will begin to attune you onto their channels. <laughs> then the master remote can control the other remotes. This is where it takes us tonight on the latayfs of the qal. If we look at the latayfs of the qal, you have a yellow light, a red light, white light, green light, black light, all in an ocean of blue light. If anybody remembers the old projection TVs, it was the same design, right? These lights would hit a screen and you'd see an entire movie. And this image is designed to match my heart on the left side. So it means this yellow light is on my heart, is on my left. Then it goes red light, white light, green light, black light. These are also suns. The first level of light that you meditate on and these are all for the people of muraqabah and meditation. So the thought first is do your muraqabah, do the meditation, say that I'm nothing, I want to connect my heart, I want to connect my heart, visualize the shaykh in front of you that I'm nothing, dress me from your light, dress me from your presence. Once they understood the tafakkur, understood the meditation, then the agenda and the school was to open then the heart. That Allah want them to understand the house of Allah and those that understand enough, their heart will become a house of Allah Qal bil mu'min baytullah, once their house is baytullah, they're like a Kaaba and a Qibla, wherever they go everything is, is contained within their being. So the first level of this meditation, the station of the Qalb, the easiest way to understand, oh what am I supposed to use, how am I supposed to use this shaykh? And that was the understanding, is that all of this understanding of three states of matter, take your testing, be nothing. And now I want Ya Rabbi open for me the station of the qalb that I want to be dressed by that reality. I have to understand the tafakkur and that I'm not capable of opening any lataif. I get people emailing me 
from other groups. Oh, Sheikh, I opened this Lataif, then I opened this Lataif, and now I'm going to open this Lataif. Well, so well then, congratulations, go all the way to the top. But in our book and in our way, in Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah, I absolutely am the biggest problem myself. I'm not capable of anything, I'm not capable of opening anything because at the door of this way I admitted to myself my nothingness. There is no way for anyone to open anything from themselves, especially a Naqshbandiyah. But what they want is that in this station of the qalb, I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi, I'm nothing. And in my madad, in my tafakkur, in my contemplation with these great shaykhs that say, Sultan al-Awliya, my Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Sultan al-Awliya, Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, that they're in front of me and I'm nothing, and Abdul Kalajis, Da'ifu, Miskinu, Zalim, Jahal, I'm an oppressor to myself, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. When I'm doing the muraqabah and I say, I want to study this station of the qalb, I want my heart to open that reality of the qalb, say, they dress me from this yellow light. And see that yellow light and ask that from your heart, please send that yellow light into my heart because he's the master remote, I'm the slave. That's why we say qulam. He's the Sayyid, the Master and I'm the Qulam. I'm asking to be Qulam on your way, to be nothing. I'm going to take off my desires of these buttons, say to dress me from this yellow light and then begin to visualize this yellow light coming from the shaykh's heart to your heart. And visualize everything around you is that yellow light. And that I want to be dressed and in, in, in that reality of that yellow light, this is the reality of the light of the sun. And this is the reality, then you read the book. The book then begins to teach this station of the qalb is the reality of knowledge. And that's why it's the first door in the house of Allah So in this room that Allah wants to open, it has to be the oceans of knowledge. The dress me from this yellow light. That's why when you go into the articles you begin to understand that there's a prophet at that station, there's an angel at that station, there's a companion at that station, there's a zikr at that station, all relevant to the station of this qalb. That I want my qalb to open, the lataif of this qalb to open. I see everything all the time as a yellow light. I do my zikr in that understanding. Yeah, and then you read the book, read the knowledges and say, oh, I'm reading that Sayyidina Jibreel is in this station. Ya Sayyidi, dress me from the light of Sayyidina Jibreel. And then you begin again in your tafakkur asking that the light of Sayyidina Jibreel a yellow light to begin to enter into my heart. Ya Sayyidina Jibreel, you who are a lover of Sayyidina Muhammad dress my heart from your light for the sake of Prophet Ask on behalf of Prophet Not for me, I'm nobody, but for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad dress me from your light. And every zikr and every meditation asking Sayyidina Jibreel, dress me from your light, Sayyidina, dress me from your beauty. The one whom going to come and start to give you knowledges is the light of Sayyidina Jibreel And why does he have to keep coming and going? If you're going to be a servant of knowledges, means he's going to begin to deposit a yellow light within your heart, right? Why does he have to keep coming and going if you're the person of this reality and you're consistently asking to be dressed from these knowledges? Means then Sayyidina Jibreel begins to deposit a light within your heart which becomes the, for Prophet was ilham, was knowledge. For non was what they call, was wahi for Prophets and for non-Prophets was ilham. For Sayyidina Muhammad and all the Prophets was wahi, they get their wahi from that light. For non of a Lesser reality, they get the ilham and the knowledges of Sayyidina Jibreel through this yellow light that now communicating into their heart. Then what was the prophet of that? Was Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And then connecting your heart with Sayyidina Adam and saying, Ya Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, 
جسمي واسمك كلها الله عز وجل gave all knowledges to you at all moments the soul of an Adam is coming upon this earth means then the book is, is and this way is based on tafakkur you read the understanding of the Qad then you make the tafakkur that I want to understand the reality of Sayyidina Adam means then all these souls of Malakut they want to communicate with us Sayyidina Jibreel wants to be known by the believers he wants to be called upon. He wants his light السلام, to be given. Sayyidina Adam السلام, wants to be known. Sayyidina Uthman al Qari, Jami al Quran and Majeed, the compiler of knowledges of the reality of Holy Quran, wants to be known. Then we understand now oh, all the characters and the noble souls of this room, I want to know because this is the house of Allah. Which angels are in which room? What tajalli and light are in the rooms and I want that lataif to be opened within my heart. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.